Yes. Where do you buy your cheese? We have a specialized store in San Antonio that that has a whole which, which kills ninety nine point nine percent of any bacteria in there. Right. Yeah. Well, is that a good idea? That's well, the question no, right. I'm at this point, because it, it looks like the the uh, raw milk. I make cheese with raw milk, unpasteurized, and it mm -hmm. looks like that in a couple of years that won't be allowed right. in Europe. In Ireland, because mm -hmm. Ireland. Uh, uh, they're going down a road. They've done it before. They take the EU regulations and apply a certain slant on them, which is perhaps more or more onerous or more, you know, than anybody else. So find yourself. There's an, uh, uh, a there's something they found in milk. It has got to be E. coli. Mm -hmm. It's a type of E. coli, and there's a test. It's called V. Tech. V. Tech. V. T. E. C. Less or more carotene. Every day. The What's Everest, carotene? Uh, from the grass, it makes the, the milk more yellow. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yellow. As okay. it gets towards summer, the milk goes more yellow. There's more oh, okay. grass in the diet. So, but I, I'm one of these people that think that cheese made with unpasteurized, they call it raw milk, but I'll, ca I'll call it um, uh, natural whole milk, okay? Right. That, that contains bacteria that you don't get in pasteurized mm -hmm. stuff. Okay, because that there they are. So, but and are those very bacteria are what help the cheese to develop fantastic flavors, flavors. Absolutely. Okay. individual flavors. Right. Mm -hmm. You get, you could, you. Know, I, I think I read uh, recently in the states of nine hundred different cheeses in the states now that they recognise as a cheese. And they're all different. You want to make blue Why cheese? About it. You need moisture. Oh, you need moisture in the air. Right. When you come to Ireland, there's always moisture in the air. <laughs> Got that here. And you said earlier when you pulled up, you said to me, does the weather affect your cheese making? Uh, yeah? yeah. Well, it does. If I'm making blue cheese and it's very dry, then I'm afraid my cheese doesn't work out very well at all. Right. Something else. Because the uh, Cheese needs a moist. Your favorite English cheese. Yeah, atmosphere. So moisture makes your favorite English cheese. Dry it's in the cheddar. Cheese. Fantastic. It's very old. And they've been making it for three hundred years. This cheese. But I only had red cheddar though. <laughs> <laughs> With a wax rind on it, weighs two point three kilos. Mm -hmm. So I lose 0 0.3 of a kilo, a third of a kilo, which to me. Is uh, when you lose it, I lost that one for a second. It's two kilos without it, the rind. It, 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 when, okay. when it's um, uh, in the natural, that uh, uh, I once it? read a book, a cheese book, and it said, uh, everybody knows, it says, that uh, when you want blue cheese, you try and make a contrast between the blue and uh, the mold and the paste of the cheese vivid. So, in other words, the whiter this is the bluer that looks mm -hmm. okay? okay so they recommend putting something chloro chlorophyll into the milk to make the milk very very white so I read that and I'm against using unnecessary ingredients and I thought well sod that I said I'm not gonna eat. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go colored I'm not going white he's telling me to go white I'm gonna go colored so I started coloring my cheese then and over the years the colour has increased. Some of it different grades, some goes green, some goes blue, some are strong, some are less. And this and this one is about number two on a scale of five in strengths. Right. That's why you like it. It's, mm. not, it's not overly strong. Mm. But how, how old is that one now? Oh no, I, well I'd say it's probably August. Six okay. months. Right, six months. Um, now I've been asked by, this is how they work it now. This guy went to the went to board beer, a local guy, and he went the to local board, food board. board. He went to the food board and said, "Is there any cheese that that we haven't got in Ireland? Is there anything, any category of cheese that people are crying out for we haven't got?" And board beer said, "Well, very strong blue cheeses. We don't have any strong blue cheeses in Ireland." Your man said, "Okay." Then he went to Super Value. Uh, Musgraves, mm. you know, there's the mm. big uh, su wholesale, wholesale. supermarkets. Mm. Okay. And he said, uh, Listen, I'm thinking of doing an Irish blue cheese, really strong. What do you think? And the guy said, Well, hang on. And he got the right man into the office and he asked him, and he said, Yeah, well, yeah, we could bring us your strong blue cheese. We'll try it in the branches. We're really keen to get it going. And the guy said, Right, now, I need to I get like some cheese. Uh, 
Yes. To do something for me. Could you make for me, come up with a, a recipe and make a trial run of very, very strong blue cheese? Uh, yep. Yeah, I can do that with returns and whatever, you know. And then he said, uh, when will it be ready? I said, when do you want it? About a month. <laughs> I said, no, oh, yeah. Uh, eight months? Twelve months? Why did it take that long? I said, well, you want it very strong. It'll take time for the, you know, you, you want the strong cheese with the strong blue, you know. Yeah. He, he said, oh, no, maybe not, I'm just a strong blue. So, anyway, I'm on with it now. I'm going, I, I've ordered the very, very strong blue. Yeah, so I'm going to come up with something. But I am, I'm resigned to the fact that he's going to be ringing me every, every other week. Mix it with a little mayo and spread it on a steak oh. and cook the steak oh, that sounds good. and then yesterday he was in that cafe in town mm. with two guys who've got Kerry Black's beef Cows, yeah. and he's talking to them about beef so we can put this cheese on the beef in two days I mean that guy's just nice that's great stuff. that's great that's yeah. gonna be great for you great for everybody oh yeah but this is a different cheese now you know but I call this one Bearer Blue go around the Bearer Peninsula it's a cheese I've been trying to make for several years with varying degrees of success. It's not a mainstream thing. You How see. old is that one? Though? Yeah, this is about uh, a year now. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to two years, and I've done that, I kept it there because I couldn't face it. I thought, I don't like that cheese. I just left it on the shelf. But two years, so last year, sir, it was two years old. I opened the cheese. I, tra I tried it. It was so hot. Hot. The, the heat was so bad. Now, I went to. Uh, well, hot? What do you mean? It just so it was hot flavour. About, yeah, it's a hotness had developed in this cheese that I'd never come across before. I'd okay. seen it once in Gorgonzola years ago, but this hotness. I took it down to Mahan Point Market. There was a guy selling my cheese there, and I took it down. I said, "Listen, would you like this cheese?" Uh, I don't know. He said, "I'll try it." Jesus, he said, "That's hot! Wow, that oh." Have you any more? <laughs> <laughs> he bought it. Because the thing about cheese is, you know, everybody likes something different. Mm -hmm. And we can like this and say, wow, that's really good. And the next person looks at this and says, wow, that's it's, fantastic. It's, it's like milder it in awful. other ways as well. You know, it's milder, but yeah. you can. stronger. It's still very creamy, but... Yeah. Oh, it's good. Yeah. I like yeah. spicy. I like yeah. spicy. See that? This is the real buffalo cheese now. This is the... It, it, it's... It's it's about half that size. Yeah, you can imagine half mm -hmm. the size. So that it sort of went like that. And this the thing about buffalo milk is cow's milk is four percent fat. Four percent fat roughly. Mm -hmm. the buffalo is eleven percent fat. Whoa. So is there special challenges with this mm -hmm. cheese? Now, what's what's a fantastic thing is the yield. No, no, but I didn't. I, don't, I can't remember trying the wax actually. I was, I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> the wax cheese, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you got me there. Well done. Now, what, what creates this kind of a rhyme? I tell you what. What it I've is? Lost the room. I can't remember the flavour of that again. You <laughs> what, what it is? I tell you what it is. It's my and I'll show you my little ripening room in there. Okay, it's that old shed there, and uh, stuff grows in there. Yeah, on the walls and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Natural fungus. Fungus. Yeah. Yes. And uh, some years ago, about ten years ago, Olga said. My wife, can you make some uh, brie? Right. She thinks I said, really, you really sell brie if you made some brie. So that that was said ten years ago, and I wasn't perhaps as uh, cognizant of what I was doing as I am now. Mm -hmm. And I I tried to make some brie. Well, I wasn't enamoured with the result, but the, the, the trouble is that penicillin candidium is what that's called, that white. It's living in my room. Mm -hmm. And you know, some the best thing I ever put in there because it quickly coats the cheese in a fantastic white. Right. I mean, look at that, and compare that. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, yeah. that, that. I mean, 
the blood put that, you off. That's, you know, but that, mm. it's clean. Mm. It could go any plate, couldn't it? You know, nobody would. Yeah. And I suppose a lot of people would even eat that, wouldn't oh, they? Oh, of course, they I would, would eat, even it, eat yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. If I got it, but it's still. <laughs> <laughs> What's your USP? It, yeah. It's all right having some cheese, but mm. you've asked me to make some cheese. I've got moulds, mm. cheese moulds, to make that size of cheese. Your cheese is going to be that size. Is that what you want? What, do, what about, I said, a big, mm. low one? Mm. So, so, you know, that big, mm -hmm. but this big. What about that? Can we do it like that? Or coming up with some way? Or what about the cheese covered with peppercorn? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Or hemp seeds? Right. Or, you know, something like that to make right your stand out. And you have a cow, and the next thing, uh, you have some milk, so you drink it. And then there's, uh, what are we going to do with the rest of the milk? Or oh, we make some yoghurt. And then what do we do with, oh, there's still milk left. Make some soft cheese, make some charred cheese. Every day it comes Ooh. in. You have to do something every day. Because the cow, one thing I keep having, the yeah. cow <laughs> keeps producing. Cow keep milk. producing. And then she has a car for next year. Another little lovely little female car. Oh, we'll keep that one as well. And then you got two, and then uh, you have to do something then. So, and I was making cheese in small quantities, single cheddars, small cheddars, probably the weight of that, almost every night on the, on the stove in the kitchen. And, um, it's hopeless, you know, it was just hopeless. I had no proper way to store them. And I just, one day it was, uh, the vet from Castle Timber came and uh, I showed him, he said, I don't get it. He said, why don't you just set yourself up making cheese? You've got a building there, why don't you do that? And I thought, oh, there's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't I do that? <laughs> yeah. Another cow, another yeah. one in. <laughs> yeah, so then one cow became two and two became three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, and, uh, so whose cows do you use now? Floor Sullivan up the valley and let the moisture start evaporating off it. And with the small rounds that you've got, would you yeah. cut it in half so that yeah. the moisture can get into it? I would. It's not a, it won't because his cheese is surrounded by the by the by the coating. It wouldn't be sufficient for those ones to leave it just uncut. You should cut it with moisture in. Oh yeah, I saw so. Okay, all right. Yeah. Oh. Well, Can I have a look at that below? Moist. And when it comes to ready to eat it, you when you come to eat it, you've got to start. Yeah, because what happens is, it's think about it. It's whey, isn't it? It's mm. whey that's in the cheese, not water. Mm. It's whey, yeah. yeah. and that whey kept inside that plastic because uh, the cheeses are unpressed. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. What happens is. It, it develops, it starts after a couple of months, it develops a sort of faint sourness. Okay. okay? And by opening it, you, you that sourness goes away, goes away yeah. during the car. Now, Olga uh, in the shop, you know, she serves. It's milder uh, in another way. Well. Well. You know, it's milder, yeah. but blue. It's stronger. still very creamy. Mm. Yeah. She yeah. took uh, uh, some like little ones in. See that? The, this is the real buffalo cheese now. This is a, it, it, it's, it's, it's about half that size. Yeah, you can imagine, half mm -hmm. the size. In my makers will produce four cheddar cheeses, like in those moulds there, look. Yeah, four cheddar cheeses. Okay. Uh, it will produce the gouders, which are those moulds there, you know, particularly specific just the Dutch, absolutely proper job, like, you know, mm -hmm. in England, we're using uh, sewer pipes, <laughs> because they're the cheapest, you know. <laughs> but, uh, my, that, that, that's, that's my beer maker. <laughs> Stir a little, drink a little. I know, fantastic. Uh, yeah, so there's no bush to see, that's it. That's but it all happens in here, everything I need to make it, to cut the curd, to stir it, to everything, this is, this device comes round and these things stir around, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, if you're making cheddar, from when the milk goes in, 